after staying up all night and working all day and sleeping in his clothes, working in his laboratory, trying to find the, the right material with which to make the filament of his bulb, um, you know, goes through hell and they say, yeah. You know, the, the patent office told uh, Edison, take a hike, get out of here. You're not going to give you a patent on the light bulb. Because, you, you know, when you invent something, Albert, I mean, uh, Thomas, whatever your name is, uh, it has to have some practical application. After something has been approved of and accepted, our attitude is, of course, everybody knows that. But until then, it is, um, it is the object of attack. Sewer gas. The smell of the ocean related to algae blooms, uh, which happen to be associated with uh, abundance of uh, little creatures uh, that attract fish, and that attracts birds that eat the fish, you know, so it's a, it, uh, if something happens along the shoreline where algae grows, algae is photosynthetic, uh, it responds to sunlight, and uh, it produces eventually uh, sulfur, di dimethyl uh, sulfide, uh, which apparently encourages the formation of some clouds. And that's my point. This chemical, you know, anything that's floating in the air is called an aerosol. And a little, little bits of uh, chemical stuff floating in the air. Uh, same as dust, odors, stuff floating in the air, aerosols. Some aerosols may uh, increase... Uh, the cloud formation, small aerosols that cause water vapor to condense into droplets, and then uh, larger aerosols, dust particles, uh, would cause these droplets to further condense into raindrops. The rain, rain occurs when circumstances are just right, a, a balance of pressure and temperature and the presence of cloud condensation nuclei. Well, Svensmark has this idea that cosmic radiation passing through the Earth's atmosphere, colliding with uh, oxygen and nitrogen and so on, uh, creates uh, cloud condensation nuclei. Maybe it does. But uh, my, my guess is, my sincere hunch is, is that most clouds 99.99% of the clouds in the sky are the result simply of condensation, water molecules coming together because uh, they have uh, what's called a magnetic dipole moment. They, uh, they're, they're positive at one end of the molecule and negative at the other when, uh, when, when they cool and when they stop vibrating. When they stop bouncing around, uh, they're able to link up. The heat causes them to vibrate, and the little weak link is broken. That's why uh, water evaporates. Heat causes evaporation because it causes these little molecules to vibrate and come loose, come apart, and scatter. And when they cool, they stop vibrating so bad, and they are able to link up magnetically. And uh, this happens automatically without the use of the need for any... GD cloud condensation nuclei. This happens as a result of temperature. The little uh, molecules vibrate. When they're vibrating uh, too much, they cannot get together. They're weakly attracted to one another. When, when they cool, the vibration subsides and they, they link up. And all of a sudden you've got a little droplet of water. But then the, the droplet repels its neighboring droplet because of surface tension and no rain. You have clouds but no rain. All right, here's that's your introduction to uh, cloud condensation nuclei. Sewer gas is one of the things that may encourage the formation of clouds, but I, I suspect that it is a minor thing. It happens along shorelines where there is an algae bloom. Algae blooms don't bloom all year long they're not they're not everywhere they're occasional they're here and there 
but there's a hell of a lot of clouds in the sky that had nothing to do with the GD algae bloom. So this hunt for cloud condensation nuclei is probably bogus. Why, why, would, why, why was Svensmark hunting for cloud condensation nuclei? Because he noticed, as did other people, and it's obvious that uh, when cosmic radiation increases, say you've got a cosmic ray counter, and uh, you count the number of particles that hit this uh, sensor, um, there, there are laboratories around, around the Earth that have these cosmic ray counters. And when they noticed that uh, when uh, cosmic rays increase, the output of the sun decreases slightly and vice versa. These two are inversely correlated. It, 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 it seems to point the finger at the sun having something to do with cosmic rays. Well, and that's just the opposite. That's bogus. The sun uh, doesn't influence cosmic rays significantly, if at all. The sun is gobbling up some interstellar material. The interstellar material moderates cosmic rays. So whenever the material is present, whenever this fuel is present, which causes the sun to burn brighter, cosmic radiation decreases because it is moderated and diffused and scattered by the presence of this clump of interstellar material. And this explains why our climate bumps along, up and down, hot and cold, day by day, month by month, you know, take away the seasonal effects and the weather effects. But this has an a impact on climate, which is like the big weather, long-term weather. And uh, such a dramatic impact, uh, it can cause both of the poles of the Earth to freeze over so much so that ice builds up a mile thick on the poles and ocean levels, sea level drops. So it's a pretty dramatic effect. And, uh, and if you're living in a, a place that was temperate and mild where you could grow olives and grapes, uh, when the cold, cold period sets in, uh, you notice it. You notice when the river freezes over and it never used to freeze over. And my theory is that this is because of uh, the Earth's movement through space, uh, approaching and gobbling up, sucking in fuel, burning brighter, and then it passes out of that little clump and it dims slightly. Now, this is very slight, and these clumps are uh, extremely tenuous, lacking in density, very few molecules, you know, so it's, it's a very small thing. But uh, I say that our, our planet Earth is very sensitive to these subtle changes in solar output. And, well, our planet, and, and especially us, well, life, uh, when we're adapted to swimsuits and we suddenly have to put on parkas, you know, we notice it. We notice it. When our crops fail, because the weather has changed dramatically from where it, what it used to be, we notice it. You know, it, it has an impact, and it's not the cosmic ray, the GCR is galactic cosmic rays seeding clouds, causing clouds to increase. The clouds increase when the sun brightens. The iris effect, more sunlight, more clouds. Less sunlight, less clouds. So the Earth's temperature tends to stay the same unless the sun significantly dims or brightens for a, a period of time and uh, it slowly cools and or slowly warms depending on the output of the sun it's the sun that means we got a, we got a hold of a boring topic except that if scientists realized it was the sun and not man-made carbon dioxide uh, Obama and his communist dumb tards uh, would not be able to economically cripple the United States by demanding that we cut our carbon emissions.